the previous episode. Unless you want to be the librarian. A few moments later. Hi, Lily. How can I help you? Aww. Thank you for joining us once again. <laughs> Holding the library book with one arm, I trawl my pocket for the key to the door. Oh, Harry Potter. I suddenly f sound... Harry the sudden Potter! sound <laughs> from this side startles me, making me nearly drop the books I'm carrying or the key that I almost almost managed to get into the lock. Uh, wait. Ooh, this is... Someone new? Allergic. <laughs> ah, it is. <laughs> I turned around to see who was talking to me. It's Kenji. He seems to be in a friendly mood, although the light glinting off his glasses in the dark gives him a sinister look. <laughs> it's just me. It makes him pause and licks his lips nervously. Who is me? I don't know anyone called me. Are you some new guy again? His voice is suddenly strained and quick. Yes, but we've met before. Yesterday. I don't think so. I would remember someone who I met only yesterday. When was that? What day is it today? <laughs> I tried to ignore him. Is he joking or what? Prove that we've met before. You live across the hall. You're Kenji. <laughs> That's terrifying! Kenji jumps back, his eyes, eyes filled with un un uncomprehending fear. How do you know my name? Damn, this can only mean one of two things. Either we have met, and you are telling the truth, or I just can't remember it, or you are a spy. That's that's three things. He pauses. A I psychic spy. <laughs> what? His eyes dart around me, trying to peek into my room. Although it's hard to believe he can see anything through those thick glasses. His mood swung from friendly to manic in less than a minute. I'm I'm not psychic. How do I know that? I'm not a mind reader. Kenji points a finger in my face, damningly. I'm like you. <laughs> Stop that, man! We met yesterday. What's wrong with you? I live in this room. Lies! If you think you can pass as he's out because I'm legally blind, you are sorely mistaken. You don't even look like him. I mean, the resemblance is real, real slim. Maybe at a distance, but who do you think you're kidding? I want to grab him by the shoulders and shake him, exasperated. I rub my eyes and let out a heavy sigh. Stay there. Kenji comes closer. One <laughs> careful step at a time. I stay still. At least he assaults me physically. <laughs> Although, I doubt he could do much damage, even if he did. Oh wait, I see it now. Damn, it really is you. Sighing again, and then once again for good measure, I step backwards just in case. What's up, man? You don't look too good, I think. Something wrong? You creeping me out, that's what's wrong. <laughs> I don't know, I just had something stupid happen to me. A few stupid things, actually. Even if you discount this one. I can't get a proper touch on other people here, and I have no idea if it's because of me or because of them. I don't know why I'm telling this to Kenji. It's not like we've had any contact either. That's rough, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry about calling you a psychic spy and all, but you can never be too careful. Psychic spies, they could just be around the corner. <laughs> yeah. It's the hard reality we live in. I'm slowly starting to think Genji isn't necessarily <laughs> living in the same reality as the rest of us. Yeah, I'd, I'd venture to say that much too. You see, this is how it is, this world. There is no justice. You see, even when I lose, I win because I don't lose the lesson. What? What does that even mean? I just did a shit ton of ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm high as fuck. He dismisses it flatly with a wave <laughs> of his hand. 
So what oh. happened? Why the long face? Why do you have a long face? It's nothing. I just scared some girl off accidentally. Literally, too. She actually ran away from me. It was my fault, really, I think. I'm not really used to all this yet. A girl. <laughs> A cute one. <laughs> That's a hard question. She had a nice body and really beautiful hair. But the. Yo, shallow. Why am I so shallow? Because you hate gates. <laughs> the guy hate gates. I guess it could go either way. She was cute. Dude, she was cute. If, she if was we cute. have a choice, I want her to be the first one. Yes. That was. Yes. So she was good. cute. We're going with cute. Yeah, she, she was. Yeah, cute, I guess. I knew it. There are a lot of cute girls here, a strangely disproportionate amount. I believe this is one of the dark secrets of this school. What, it attracts I tried babes? <laughs> I tried to warn you, man, but did you listen? Why is that a bad thing? I don't know. I don't remember such a warning. Dark secrets? Yes. Dark secrets. Extremely dark, like a black hole. Have you noticed that the number of girls in this school is slightly, but significantly higher than the number of boys? It's like 60-40. <laughs> he turns his head to the left and stares off into the distance at nothing. Why is it like this? I mean, to the untrained eye, it doesn't appear to be that bad, but that is a full 20%. One would think that a school with a huge pool of women would be a man's dream, but no. What I am about to tell you could blow your mind. Are you ready? I don't know where he's going with this, but I think I won't be missing much by cutting out now. No, <laughs> no, I'm not ready. <laughs> I only get as far as turning the doorknob before Kenji starts talking again, showing that he doesn't really care if my mind is blown or not. I believe that this school is a battleground. The site of a feminist infiltration. This disparity is the number of men to women is a clear sign of how far they have come. In case this Cold War turns hot, they will have superiority in numbers. Just another skirmish in the eternal war against the forces of the feminists. They're everywhere. In Japan, women outnumber men. It's not a 60 to 40 split, but it's only a matter of time, man. <laughs> this guy's fucked. <laughs> yes. Even in America, women are the majority by a hair. They're building up their numbers. In the past, the buildup of a military has always been the clearest sign of imminent war. Japan is just the first step. Our economy is badass, and this country itself is a small and isolated, yet a huge part of the Pacific in terms of political value. The perfect target. They are so cunning, as expected of women. Soon the day will come when... Kenji's face trails off ominously. That is why you can't trust them. They will string you along and then kill you just as they killed me. You will end up just like me. What? Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop myself from flirting it out. Yes. Yo, whatever you're on, that E, you, you need to be, you know, <laughs> passing that right over because I want to be on what you're on. Oh, God. Hey, what the hell does that mean? You said it, not me. That's the best <laughs> I can think of. So you're not supposed to say something like that? Damn, so rude. Where was I? Oh yeah, fast feminist conspiracy. Stop it, stop, just... I lost you way, way back there, somewhere. Somewhere around feminist infiltration. Too hard to follow? 
It's cool. I have some graphs and stuff in my room. And puppets. You like puppets? Potter puppet pals! <laughs> no puppets. <laughs> you don't like puppets? Okay. Graphs are still cool though, right? He speaks energetically, responding almost before I'm done talking, moving his hands in an animated way as he continues to rant on. This is too strange. I had him pegged as relatively normal, but it's clear that I was wrong. Something on your mind, dude? Just thinking about what it's like to be the last sane man in this insane world. <laughs> Kenji frowns, looking deeply upset. You mean that's you? That can't be, because I'm the last sane man in an insane world. That is my dream. You can't just steal a man's dream. What the hell? There can't be two last sane men. It would invalidate that whole last part, and that part is kind of important. There can only be one. Like in that foreign movie where there could only be one, and in the end there is only one dude left, because that was the point. The one by Jet Li. Good movie. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the reference is so nice, good. Nice. I have never seen anyone talk so heatedly and so defensively about absolutely nothing before. Anyway, if you wait here, I can get my graphs. I also have a list of the other dark and complex conspiracies that this school holds. As tangled as... Quick, finish my analogy for me. Be a pal. I'm going to bed now. It's extremely late. That doesn't sound like an analogy, but whatever. I like you. You seem like a cool dude. Most people don't understand what I'm talking about when I try to explain the vast feminist conspiracy to, conspiracy to them. Denial is a terrible thing. Later. He claps me on the back and then vanishes into his room so quickly and quietly. It's like he didn't even open the door, but instead walked right through it. It like a ghost. Kenji doesn't exist. <laughs> what? Well, he did let's, say they let's killed Let's not them. read into it. No, let's I'm not. not I'm not going <laughs> to read into that, but he did say they killed me. I'm just, just going to point that out oh, there. Ooh. He did say, yeah, they'll kill you did, like they, yeah, like they he, killed me. Did he dead? I don't know. Our meds might be tripping us up. I'm just oh. saying. I don't know if I can fully digest what happened. So I give up and just go to my room, kicking off my shoes before falling face first into bed. It takes me some time to relax and get up so I can get started on homework. It's because the sheets are so cool and comforting against my cheeks, and it feels good just laying there with my eyes closed. The school is like some kind of bizarre and surreal island. It's isolated on top of a mountain, and each person is stranger than the last. I just can't seem to fit in. What irony. One would think that fitting in a place that's made for people who are unfit for anywhere else would be easy. Maybe I'm trying too hard. Although I say that, it doesn't help take the edge off, and the words are left echoing off my empty walls. I guess it's not bad, not as bad as I expected though. This place is more a school and less a hospital pretending it's a school than I thought it would be. If nothing else, the scenery is beautiful. I open my eye, seeing the school books and bottles of pills arranged side by side on my desktop. Maybe this place is too much like a normal school after all. It is a normal school. What's your problem? I feel very tired this morning, probably because yesterday itself was a very tiring day. On top of that, I woke up far earlier than necessary. After saying hi to Shizune and Misha, I start doing the work as instructed from the board. It, it already looked like today is going to be heavy. I don't have a problem with that now though. Shizune and Misha might jump on me trying to get an answer about whether or not I've decided to join the student council, even if it's just one day. I wouldn't put it past them to try, and I don't have an answer for them if they do, so this situation is convenient for me. About 10 minutes into class, Hanako walks in and takes a seat, but no one looks at her. The teacher doesn't even comment on her lateness. He does, however, stop us to say that we're going to break into groups again. I turn my head and see that Shizune and Misha are looking at me. Shizune gives me a smile that is equal parts cute and menacing. 
This is a smile that says, we have you now. <laughs> we have you now. There is no <laughs> escape. You done. It looks like we're together again. Yay, yay. Misha leans sideways while she suddenly pushes her desk closer to her mind. There really is no escape now unless I were to go <laughs> to jump out the window. <laughs> Jumping out the window isn't the best option, sadly. Uh, what's wrong, Hee chan Oh, Hee chan have you been thinking about what you said yesterday? You said that you would think about joining the student council, didn't you? It's okay, Hee-chan. We were talking about it after you left, and it would be rude to expect you to already have an answer for us this early, right? Right! <laughs> I'm so happy you two are able to laugh at my expense, and even more pleased to know that you both know how crazy the two of you can be. Now that that's over, Shizune snaps into serious mode and smacks today's assignment with the back of her hand in an overly dramatic and important way. When I actually look at the stuff, it's mostly just reading. In fact, there are only two problems. I almost want to say something about how her rush to get started seems a bit co much, considering the small amount of work. In fact, Shizune probably knows how little there is, and simply doesn't care. Yeah, it seems like the workload doesn't matter to her as much as the fact that there is work. The actual amount is, un is unimportant. She approaches everything with the le same level of ambition. Oh! Mm. While I'm reading, I let my eyes wander around the room and catch Hanako trying her hand at solving the problems. It looks like she's working alone. I can't remember seeing her working with others before. Thinking back to how shy she is, it's understandable. Hey... That girl over there? Huh? Who he chan? Her, Hanako, over there. Does she always work alone? I think so, he chan. Do you feel sorry for her because she's alone? I was just thinking that maybe she could work with us or something. Mm, no, I don't think that'd be a good idea, he chan. What? Why not? Shi Chan wouldn't get along with her. Why? Misha shuffles around the question, letting out a laugh that sounds very strange. It's nervous, but still has that lilting up and down quality presented in everything she says. Just because, He Chan. By now, Shizune has noticed our conversation, and it makes me realize again how Misha has been signing everything she has been saying this whole time. What, Shichan? The friend of my enemy is my enemy? That sounds so harsh. I'm not going to say that. You said it anyway. I know, Shichan. It's fine if you over here. I wonder if this is Misha's way of keeping things fair, since without her, I wouldn't be able to understand a thing she's in a saying, and vice versa. Ah, that's, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Is that also why she signs all the time? So that there's, there is never a conversation she's in a will be left out of? Anyway, we should start on the problems now, he chan We finished with time to spare and I decided to ask if there are any alternatives to, to the cafeteria, as frankly, the food so far has been subpar. This sends Shizune and Misha arguing among themselves about their favorite restaurants. All of them are downtown, so I don't think we have time to go all the way there. And what about the bill? Are they arguing just for the fun of it? <laughs> Maybe they seem so distracted by it that they don't even notice the start of the actual lunch break. I look over my shoulder toward the back of the classroom. She seems to be studying her notes from the previous class. It's an odd sight. Everyone else in the class is busy, busying themselves with a lunch break. Socializing, gossiping, rearranging desks, and one, the ones with actual lunch, uh, box lunches mix in and chattering like everyone else, only interrupted by short bouts of eating. Oh, that's wrong, wrong, uh. wrong. There you go, ha. But when I watch Hanako, it feels like I'm the only one who can see her. Almost as if she was invisible. Sort of hiding in plain sight. Is she being bullied? Is she isolated? Uh, is she isolating herself from the rest of the class on her own accord? 
I see her look over her shoulder towards the classroom's rear door. Come to think of it, she hasn't turned a page since I started watching her. I guess she's waiting for someone? What to do? Ooh. Hmm. We scared her off the first time. Oh, no, no. It was fine. And then we did something that was not in our control and we chased her off. Yeah. So and I wonder if we go talk to her, like, will, will that make her feel better? Because we wanted... Because no one talks to her. Yeah, and, and we, we, like wanted her. To, we wanted to apologize. Yeah. I think talking over there is good. Talking? Get yeah. I wanna... I oh, she's got... Oh, man, if she runs away, or this... Uh... <gasps> okay, I still feel bad for making her run away yesterday, so I'd better say something. Um, hey there, Hanako. He saw? She remembered my name! Aww. Yes! Well, <laughs> at least she remembered my name! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, I just wanted to apologize for yesterday. I, I didn't mean to startle you or anything. I'm just new here and I thought I should get to know my classmates. As Hanako looks up at me, I notice her scarring once more. It's a little bewildering that you can barely notice it from across the room, but it's so no noticeable from close up. That. That. Oh, oh wait, that's you. Sorry. That's, <laughs> that, that's okay. It. It was my fault. Nah, that wasn't anyone's fault. It just kind of happened. So, are you waiting for someone? I saw you looking at the door before. Yes, Lily. Oh, you mean Lily, the blind girl? Oh my <laughs> god. How many Lilies are there in the uh, school? Uh, Asshole. Wow. <laughs> Hanukkah only nods in response, and I can't help but wonder if defining people through their disability is a faux pas of the worst kind or just normal here. Uh, you know that Hisao with a heart problem? <laughs> how, would, how would she feel? Yeah, with a gate problem? <laughs> I dick the gates. Oh, yeah. I guess that explains why Lily took off after her yesterday. She seems like a nice girl. Are you two friends? Yes. As if hoping for Lily to appear, she checks over her shoulder again. I'm thinking I'm making her nervous again. I, I hope I'm not disturbing you right now. N no, that's not it. That smile, though. <laughs> She's oh. so cute. It's just easier if Lily doesn't come in here. Oh, because it's hard to get around the classroom? N not really. Hanako's gaze drifts past my shoulder towards Shizune. Shizune? Hanako nods again. What about her? Don't they get along? Hanako shakes her head. Clearly this is something that she doesn't want to talk about. It does make a strange sort of sense, Shizune and Lily not getting along so well. Communication between the two would be all but impossible. It's hard enough talking to Shizune through Misha, but when you can't see whose hands are talking? Hanako is so focused on Shizune that I am I am the first to notice Lily at the door. Oh, she's here now. Hanako spins around to confirm this. Upon seeing Lily, she moves quickly to the door. Lily! Ah, uh, Hanako, good morning. Is the president here? Y yes Hanako glances over her shoulder at Shizune again as if to confirm that she can't hear them, even though that's impossible. I suppose we'd best be off then. Lily's sigh and tone of what seems like frustration makes me raise an eyebrow. I guess there's some kind of en en enmity? Amity? Em sure. Uh, yeah, amity? Between <laughs> the two? It's intriguing, and that's not really something I'd ask about. I'm sure if they wanted me to know, they would tell me. It's only my third day here. I should be trying to make friends, not finding out why people are enemies. Still, it's a little funny to find out that this school has little feuds, just like my old high school. Because it's a normal school! <laughs> Get a clue! <laughs> Even if people are more tolerant of others, they're still going to get at each other's nerves. 
Hey, Lily, how are things? I'm, I'm sorry I made you run off yesterday. Oh my, is that Hizo? I didn't realize you were here. It seems that little Lily is a little embarrassed about being so frank in front of me. S sorry, Lily, I thought you realized. No, it's alright, Hanako. Hizo, please don't worry about yesterday, it's just a misunderstanding. If you say so, I, I'm still working out this. Uh, I'm still working this place out. Well then, I think you'll find most people here are a lot more forgiving than elsewhere. If you are feeling a little confused, please don't be afraid to ask questions. Sure, I'll remember that. Um, Lily. Lily gives a small nod of acknowledgement. I'm sorry, Hiso, but we must be off. Hanako really doesn't look l all that comfortable here right now, and Lily still seems a little embarrassed. I wonder if my apologies really made any impact. Mind if I accompany you two? I know it's kind of pushing it, but Lily hmms quietly, still smiling. I'm sure that we can accommodate you, can't we, Hanako? She looks at Lily, then at me, and then she freezes wide-eyed. Oh. <laughs> Sure. Well then, shall we go? I'm sure Lily would do this so easily if she saw how scared Hanako looked, but it can't be helped now. I, that face, so Aww. cute. Declining after the deal is sealed would only cause a confusion, uh, cause confusion and problems. So we leave all three together. Lily walks beside the wall, letting her cane gently tap against it every now and then. Hanako comes along right beside her, so close that she's practically half hugging her as they go. Although it makes uh, it must make her walking that much harder, Lily takes it in stride. As we turn around the corner of the hallway, something hits me in the chest with the force of a steam train. Hanako shreks a little, and my vision briefly goes black. Shrieks, not shreks! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shrieks. <laughs> Ouch. Opening Hi. my eyes. Oh. Opening my eyes, I see a pair of saucer like green eyes looking up at me. They belong to the perpetrator. A short girl who bumped into me has now fallen down into the hallway floor. She wears a pea uniform and is very and ha and a very worried frown. The former strikes me as rather a strange thing to have on during a lunch break. Mo more striking than that though is that she doesn't have legs. Or she does, but they're not flesh and bone. Her her pale and very much flesh and bone thighs end in shins and feet made of some black metallic and uh, metallic or plastic like material. They look disturbingly artificial and unnatural, ya yeah, think? <laughs> <laughs> it almost makes me forget that my chest is hurting. The girl winces a little and rubs her nose and jumps back up. Ooh. Huh. Feels like she has that kid sister kind of. Yeah. Uh, but not something close to Hanako. Yeah, not something close to Hanako and not. Uh, what's her face? Misha. Misha. Maybe I should do another accent. Ooh. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Country mm -hmm. would fit. <laughs> if you can. <laughs> oh god. Oh, the challenge. This is this it is, is accepted. This is this is Dandelion younger sister all over <laughs> again. Wrong, brother. <laughs> no, it's not going to be that bad. No. It's not gonna, um <clears throat> okay. Uh Yeah, here we go. I'm just going to go for it. Uh oh man. Hey, are you all right? All right, all right. I'm sorry about that, really. <laughs> oh shit, I'm making it exactly. <laughs> <You're okay. laughs> I I wasn't looking where I was going and you just came out of nowhere. Sorry. Sorry. She's looking really apologetic in the hurt puppy way of looking apologetic. I quickly forget about being angry or anything since hurt puppies are one of my weak spots. <laughs> it's it's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's, oh. I say that, but there's a stinging pain growing in my chest, and I know that this is about the biggest possible danger of my condition. Oh no, 
a chest concussion. Ooh. Don't overexert yourself. Don't forget your medication. And most of all, don't get hit in the chest. Most of all. I tried to rub my solar plexus to chase the pain away, holding my breath in an attempt to hear my heartbeat. Oh god. Ducka ducka ducka. Ducka ducka ducka. He gonna die again. <laughs> it seems normal. Hey, should I get a nurse? That worried, high-pitched voice of a girl snaps me out of it. I stare at her for a few seconds dumbfounded until I realized that I probably looked worse off than I really was. Doubled over myself and looking all tense. Damn, I'm overly worried about my heart. Uh, no, no need for that. I'm, I'm fine. Managing to say something in response, I pull myself upright, feeling my sore ribs one last time and taking a deep breath. She just knocked the wind out of me, big time. But it's nothing more than that. You sure you're okay? I, I hit you pretty hard. Oh, those eyes, though. She's so cute. I think we have a uh, competition. Ooh. Uh, it, it's okay. I said I was fine and nothing's broken. No harm done. That's good. I was... Hiso, what happened? She's not quite up to speed for obvious reasons, but she sounds very worried. More than what the situation deserves, really. Some Someone just bumped into me. Nothing serious. Just winded. Uh, sorry. It's my fault. I was just gonna get some stuff and I was in kind of a hurry. That someone here is Emmy, isn't it? The little girl coughs quietly and sniffles. And shuffles her plastic or metallic feet. You, you should know by now what they are. <laughs> Looking down at them before saying anything. Hi, Lily. Hanako. I guess the girls know each other. Do please try to be more careful. You might be sturdy enough to endure these sorts of accidents, but there are people who can't. Who aren't. The girl blushes and starts to fidget nervously like a little child being uh, caught misbehaving. It's so cute. I find myself smiling. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh I, I know that I, uh, um, I was just, uh, I, I gotta go. Teacher will have my head. I promised to help with printouts, but I went running instead. Sorry, I've got a change in everything. Before any of us can say a thing, Emmy has already bolted away, leaving the hallway eerily quiet. That painting, though. <laughs> Does that kind of thing happen often around here? There are more rules in Yamaku than usual for running in corridors. But that rarely stops Emmy, it seems. She shakes her head weakly and offers a slight ca composed smile. I don't think there's anything we can do to stop her, I'm afraid. Shall we be off then? Lily heads off along the hallway and Hanako hurries after her. The route to the room the two use for tea is fairly simple to retrace, being still fresh in my mind from yesterday. Lily and Hanako quickly go about their business of making lunch. Before I can even open my small bag of food, Lily busies herself with her thermos and tea bags as ha Oh, hiccups. Nope. <laughs> I have hiccups. It's lunchtime. <laughs> uh. and, and tea bags as Hanako is set, uh, setting... Setting out both their lunch boxes. Oh, this is gonna be a struggle. <laughs> this is gonna be a struggle. Do you need to take a minute or? Oh. <laughs> oh, you might need to take a minute. Oh goodness. <laughs> okay. Oh god. <laughs> you good? I think so. Okay. I think we're good. <clears throat> so, is this what you meant by coming here almost every day? Nope. <laughs> nope, so this is what you meant b by coming here almost every day. Yes, Hanako and I usually have lunch here. It suits both of us, so we ended up using this room regularly. After seeing Hanako's reaction to me over the past couple days, I can understand why this is a boon. That and Lily being able to get some quiet, quiet away from her class as well. I take my seat l last after Lily's poured the tea for us and sits down. The more time I spend with these two girls, the more I think they're 
A perfect foil to Misha and Shizune. Even without a voice, Shizune is direct and brash, and Misha seems to get along with everyone. On the other hand, Lily is soft-spoken and relaxed, while Haliko seems to be the shyest girl I've ever met. So, how are you faring in Yamaku, Hisao? You seemed a bit flustered before. Apart from getting lost every now and then, uh, now and again, and being crashed, tackled outside my classroom, fine, I guess. You... you look pretty hurt before. Are you really... okay? For a brief moment, I considered telling Hanako and Lily about my condition, but then I hold it back. I can't tell why, but for some reason, I feel uncomfortable talking about it to these relative strangers. Even if they have been pretty fr pretty friendly. Yeah, it's nothing. I was just a bit startled. Judging from the two girls' expression, I don't think they're buying it. But in what I assume is their way of respecting my privacy, or or as Lily would say, privacy. And privacy. <laughs> uh, they don't press the matter. I guess that is one of the unwritten rules around here. Don't ask. Even if people's condition are obvious, like Hanako's, there's still bound to be a story involved. Everyone has things that they don't feel comfortable speaking about, and I think everyone here recognizes that. So, uh, how long have you been at the school? You both seem to know your way around pretty well. Hmm, well, I've been here since the start of high school, but only moved into the dormitories a year ago. Hanako joined at the start of high school as well and moved to the dormitories when she did, if memory serves me right. That's right, since high school. So you've known each other since then? Since I moved, yes. Hanako lives next door to me, so it's only natural, right? R right. Yeah, of course. Living next to someone is probably reason enough to befriend them, though I'm guessing that Lily's blindness played a part in it as well. I can't imagine Hanako easily making friends with someone who has to deliberately avoid looking at her scars. With the immediate conversation dried up, we started to eat our lunch. It isn't long before the bells are signaling the end of the break. Like me, the girls pack up their lunches so efficiently as they set them out as efficiently as they set them out. I guess I'd better be off. Are you going to go with Hisao, Hanako? Hanako looks up at me, and for a second, I can see she is consider, uh, considering skipping class. Maybe just to avoid walking through the classroom with me. E yes. She likes oh us! Yay! She's so cute! I don't know what to think of it. Hanako really is delicate to the point of breaking if looked at, uh, looked at it in the wrong way. It makes me a bit nervous too, but I push the feelings, uh, feeling aside, trying to be as natural as I can. We you should hurry then. Class has already started by the sound of it. Lily gives a nod of farewell as she bends down to take her cane, Hanako and I uh, filing out before her. We walk quickly down the empty halls to our respective classes. As we reach the door to Lily's 3-2 classroom, she turns towards me. Isao, thank you for sharing lunch with us today. My pleasure, Lily. And with that, we part ways. Lily entering her classroom and leaving Hanako and me to make off to our own. She's looking like she wants to run away. So, do you really want to go back to class now? E yes Okay then. I feel like I should say something more to her, but it's hard to come up with anything that would be appropriate and safe enough. And Lily was right. The more time we spend out here, the more explaining we have to do. I open the rear door to the class and walk in. The teacher looks up at me and opens uh, my mouth to say s something. Opens uh, his mouth. Oh, open, <laughs> opens his mouth to say something. <laughs> opens my mouth. I I open my mouth. However, as Hanako follows me in uh, and closes the door, he simply nods to us and continues his lecture. This is the third time that Hanako has had her uh, truancy practically ignored. There's definitely something going on here. We make our way to our seats, and I notice that Misha and Shizune are both missing as well. I wonder if it's time, it's some form of informal agreement with the staff, or if it's up 
perk according to the unique students of the school. Trying to make it a little as little disturbance as I can, I extract the relevant textbooks from my bag and start catching up. The class goes on quietly. The teacher seems to be okay, uh, seems like an okay person despite the weird first impression I got, the, the hangover, <laughs> and the material is relatively interesting. However, the way he teaches is really bizarre. It's as if he expects that everyone is na a natural genius. Fair enough. When the bell, oh, a final bell sounds, I realize that there's is still a lot of time left in the day, and I'm left wondering what to do. It's odd, at the hospital I had 24 hours a day of free time, but here, filing the considerably shorter hours feels difficult. Or filling the considerable shorter hours feels difficult. Everyone else leaves, and I'm left alone with the teacher. Moto is examining the assignments sheets we were working on earlier, marking them with a red ball pen. Raising his eyes from his papers briefly, he notices me and furrows his brow. What is it, Nakai? I jump at him, addressing me, but I guess it's natural to spark some conversation since there's nobody else around. Um, nothing. Thinking about what I'd do after school. The teacher slowly puts a cap on his pen he is holding and arranges his papers into a stack, clacking it against the desk twice. He seems very methodical, and for a brief moment, I'm reminded of Shizune, but the teacher is more unhurried and relaxed, much more routine. You have no plan. Oh, wait. Uh, you had no no plans? <laughs> no, considering I joined a club, uh, considering I, I considered joining a club, holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> but don't know what kind of club act would interest me. I just like observe a meeting of someone else's club. Might pique your interest, you know. I guess. I just. But I don't know how to continue from there. Moto looks at me in a way that makes me quickly want to take the words back to avoid a conversation. But I can't, so I have to forge ahead. I just don't know how to deal with people. I mean, the other students. I'm talking to people and everything, so it's not that I'd be isolated or anything. I just don't know what to think about the disabilities. It's like, it feels that I'm being impolite if I pay attention to them, and it's weird to ignore them. Damned if I do, damned if I don't. The teacher scratches his cheek absentmindedly, looking very unresponsive. These things is only an issue if you make them one, like, you know? You can talk normally with anyone, even if they're blind or something like that. Try to look behind the superficial and stop being a prick. It's not a single student here who isn't just a normal kid, or whatever. Yeah. He says the same thing Yuko did. I know they're right, but it's hard. How can you not consider, for example, Shizune's deafness, when the only way to communicate with her is to talk through Misha? Or Hanako, it's not like you can ignore her face. But... I'm interrupted by the door of the classroom suddenly slamming open. Teacher! Misha crashes in, head straight, uh, hands straight in enthusiastic greeting. Her voice loud and lively enough to wake the dead from the graves. She starts toward the teacher's desk with her bouncing step, hands energetically swaying with a rhythm. Mato visibly dismayed at the interruption, and Misha in general slumps in his chair. Mikado. Misha stops in her tracks and looks around clueless as if she's sensing from his tone that something's wrong but has no idea what. Yes? We have talked about that void volume control before. Oh, my head. Just, just. Shh. <laughs> yes! But she doesn't lower her voice at all, and the teacher just rubs his eyes and pops a tad a little. <laughs> so, so, like, what is it? I. We need help! We're running out of supplies for the festival stands! This is a distress. She waves a pink slip of paper she's holding around. So just like, go get more supplies from the art room. What's, 
What's the problem with that? Plywood! Plywood is always the problem. Last time we wanted more, there was only a little, but that time we just took it all and went with that. Now there's like none left there, so do you know where there is some? Just like cut a tree or something. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand. How would I know? Chat, I mean, the president thought that a teacher would know if there is plywood. Was she wrong? <laughs> Muto looks like he's in great pain, frowning like his entire essence, and Misha doesn't get it at all. <laughs> looking at the two of them communicate is terrible. Like looking at a man being tortured by drilling his skull open while blasting pop music at full volume at the same time. <laughs> Brutal! <laughs> These analogies, oh my god. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm afraid I have no idea if there's any plywood in the school, let alone where it would be if there was any. As I said, just cut a tree. Aww, what should I do? Go talk to Mr. Nomia. I'm quite sure he knows where to find it, everything you need. Just, just ask him. You'd have to pry them from his cold, dead hands, but that's a different matter. I don't have time. We are so busy. She holds her head with both her hands, looking as despairing as it, it's, it's possible for a person like her. Without even noticing, she crumples the note she's holding against her hair. I shouldn't even be fetching these things. There was so much to do and we were falling behind the schedule. Muto looks at her gravely and then suddenly smiles. Smiling doesn't really fit his face. I think it'd be better if you didn't. <laughs> I, I wonder if you know could get temporary help. Oh, wink, wink. He switches to staring at me focused, uh, focusedly. Focusedly? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. With a hard expression as if trying to say, go make some friends. Eh, uh, I guess I can give you a hand. You can? Thanks, Yichan. You are really nice. She pauses, does a double take, and then points at me with her finger, yelping. Ah! And looking very puzzled. Come to think of it. What's Hee-chan doing here? Class is over, you should be having fun! We just had a little bro talk, you know? <laughs> oh no, it's not detention, is it? Are you in trouble, Hee-chan? No, no I'm not! Is Hee-chan in trouble, Sensei? I said I'm not- No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Muto sighs deeply, and I feel that I have to help Misha to get her off the teacher's back. So, what do you need? Here's a list. I can try to find the plywood from somewhere if there's none in the art room. She offers me the note she's holding. I take it, hesitating a bit. I said I'd help, but this has no implications of whether I'm joining the council or not. Oh. Still, thanks, Hichan. Try to be quick. We are in a stall building streak right now. We must hurry, hurry, hurry! She bounces out of the classroom, leaving me and the teacher looking at each other with something that feels like a silent agreement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, there you have it, Nakai. You have something to do now, you lazy piece of shit. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't sound so smug. Looking at the list, with a number of items ranging from paint to plywood, all written with small, neat handwriting that is undoubtedly Shizune's, I, have a si I heave a sigh. I'll be going then. Waving the list limply at the teacher, I exit the building. Or, exit the to the hallway. Yeah. <laughs>